Shalom. Call Loyum Wakaba La Yahweh Bashim, Yahushai Bashim, Ramchak Wadash. Yab on to the elder apostles of the Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, peace, blessings, and salutations. Until the hopefully like Tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, I wasn't really going to respond to this comment that was left. This was uh, 16 hours ago. And this was uh, on a video that I did much back. The Mamzer bastard argument and insult is getting old. You got a lot of, uh, you know, nut jobs in Israel. You know, especially the ones that teach that you got to be 100% Negroid to be considered an Israelite. You got them spewing the heresy that, you know, if, uh, if, if one of your parents will, if your mother is any other nation outside of an Israelite woman, a so-called black woman, then uh, you're not an Israelite. And that's a very, that's a very ridiculous doctrine to teach because you don't know yourself if any of your, uh, either of your parents, you know, whether on your mother or your father's side, if they line is 100%. I doubt you did that research and traced it that that far back, you know, because then you would have to make sure that your 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 grandfather and your great grandfather on both sides married and dealt with a so-called black woman. So, you know, it's, it's very ridiculous, but you got men out there teaching that. All right, and um, you know this comment right here. You know, I'm not sure if you know what. You know, he's trying to prove with this comment, but uh, we know for sure because I broke it down in his lesson, and various other uh, brothers and even apostles didn't did lessons on this before. All right, dealing with that word mamzer. You know, it's uh misused by a lot of these uh false teachers. You know, dudes that desire to be teachers of the law and don't understand what they're what they're talking about. Matter of fact, let me get that. Let's go to First Timothy one, starting at uh, verse six. And I'm gonna read it in NLT because you got a lot of these type of individuals out there. First Timothy one and six, it says, but some people have missed the whole point. This is an NLT translation. They have turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. And then, you know, that's right there off top. The first thing that this individual said was, let's discuss this. So this guy want to have a, a, a meaningless discussion about the law that's pretty much plain to understand. All right. But, you know, certain dudes misuse these laws. You know, to try to, you know, teach a certain narrative or push a certain narrative. All right, they have a certain agenda. If, if, if you want all Israel to be black, then you're going to take this law and, and, and misinterpret it. And, and, and you and you, you plan with fire when you do that. All right. It says. They have turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they are talking about, even though they speak so confidently. And those dudes are out there, dudes that's, that, that teach that, you know, we're not supposed to eat any meat, like teaching that vegan doctrine. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. All right. You, you got men that, that teach that uh you know we're only supposed to um you know we can't uh have concubines we can't sleep with women of the other nations which you know that's not our focus but you know when you're royal and you live in as a king you had a right to have uh concubines of other nations there's nothing wrong with that we're just not to to marry them and not allow them to take away our heart from serving the most high all right and, and, and many other things, man. All right, but, you know, Jake is getting uh, more ridiculous. And then even Paul said that, you know, Jake could try to, because they have a zeal of the most high, but not according to knowledge, 
they try to go about to establish their own righteousness. They create their own uh, standards. You got the, uh, the Sadducees, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, that would create whole traditions, you know, based off of their additions to the law. And that was their that was their way of establishing their own righteousness. All right, when the Lord was looking for a a, a newfound righteousness, which was faith, the just shall live by faith. And that's what they didn't understand. So anyway, going into this comment, he says, and his name is Yeshar Ye Yehuda, which y'all you know, don't know where you get that from. All right. You know, those that, that know this truth, all right, mainly are the one West camps outside of maybe uh, IOIC because they don't like to deal with the Hebrew, even though some of their men got uh, Hebrew names. But uh, we know that uh, you yous are not in the Hebrew. The correct term would be uh, Yahweh, not Yehuda. All right, the, 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 the Paleo Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew. The Lashon Kodash did not have a vowels. All right. And another thing that I noticed is this man's uh, avatar. If, if this is that that individual, you're going off already. You don't have a you don't have a beard on your face, so it looked like you're clean shaved, and you look like you have a bald head. And that's against the law. All right. Now. I'm going to read this. He says, let's discuss this. Mamzer in Deuteronomy 23 and 2, the context is a general ban on all Mamzers entering Israel's tabernacle temple. The word Mamzer means spurious, unlawful, illegitimate, to alienate, a mongrel. Now, what's interesting is, you know, when you look up what a mongrel is, a mongrel is like a mixed breed, like a, like a mutt, a, a, a dog that's a... Uh, you know, mixed breed it, not now full breed. But that's not really accurate to be associated with, with Mamzer because that's not really what it means. Um, um the man carries the seed. Every time in the scriptures when you read genealogies, it spoke of men begotten sons and daughters. Because the man is who carries the seed. So he's the progenitor of a of a lineage. That's why when you go into like the Chronicles, it, it, it gives you the lineage of, of Judah. It gives you the, the lineage of, of each tribe. When you go through the, the, the lineage of Judah, you know, it, it, it goes all the way back from Judah. And then he had his sons. And guess what? You had Tamar, the harlot. She was a non-Israelite. But that, but the line of Judah was able to still carry on through that woman. According to a lot of these dudes' definition of Mamzer, Judah would have been wiped out the moment he 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 lay with uh, Tamar. So the sons after that union uh, <laughs> would have got wiped out. That the the lineage of Judah would have been wiped out right there. So that shows you that that's this is inaccurate there's no such thing as a mixed person you are what your father is and let's 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 get a let's get numbers we y'all you already know where i'm going <clears throat> and the fact that i gotta go back over this because if you were to watch this actual video i brought all the evidence out I went into all the various scriptures that show that you are what your father is. Even went to uh, the lineage of Yahweh when you read uh, Matthew, the first chapter, it goes into his genealogy. And, and you had um, Ruth. Ruth was a part of that. She was one of the women who helped to incubate within that line. You had um, Boaz. And he 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 ended up um, having uh, Obed with Ruth, and then he ended up having who Jesse, and then Jesse had King David. 
So if you're saying that a bastard is a is is a uh, a child who's born to an Israelite father and a heathen mother, then David would have been illegitimate. He wouldn't have been able to come into the uh, congregation and his son Solomon, because it said even unto the tenth generation. So Solomon wouldn't have been able to build the temple because he would have been considered illegitimate. So that, that doesn't make any sense. All right. So anyway, um, let's get this in numbers. Uh, numbers 1 and 18, it says, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the numbers of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. Let's read the other translation. In uh, the New King James Version, it says, and they assembled all the, con all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they recited their ancestry by families, by their father's houses, and according to the number of names from 20 years old and above each one individually. So they recited their ancestry by their families, by their father's houses, not, not the mother's. Because you come from your father. All right, that's how... Ephraim and Manasseh were considered the sons of Jacob, Israelites, even though um, Joseph had both of them with, with an Egyptian, an Egyptian woman. So were they illegitimate? That means that, you know, they couldn't have been uh, part of the patriarchs. The blessing shouldn't have uh, went to them. But that's according to their logic. Anyway, I mean, there's, and there's numerous scriptures. It is just one off the top. All right, where you 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 declare your your ancestry or your lineage or your genealogy through your fathers. Let me see uh, real quick. It is dealing with Esau, the genealogy of the Edomites. This is in the New King James uh, Virgin. It says, Genesis 36 and 8, it says, So Esau dwelt in Mount Seir, Esau is Edom. And this is the genealogy of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These were the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, and Ruel, the son of Basimeth, the wife of Esau. Now, mind you, you know, Esau actually uh, went and buried some of these sons with women of, of, of another nation. Because I believe um, he was given um, the instruction or, or Jacob was given instruction from his parents, you know, not to uh, deal with, um, was it the Canaanites, if I'm not mistaken? Let me see if I can... Uh... Yeah, I'm, I have to jump up. This is uh, Genesis 36 and verse, um, yeah, I'm, you go to the top. That's all I have to do. Genesis 36 and 1, it says, now this is the genealogy of Esau, who was Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, uh, Aholibama, Aholibama, the daughter of Anah, the daughter of Zibion the Hivite. And Basimeth, or, or Basemeth, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nabajoth. So he took wives from the Canaanites and also uh, Ishmaelite. And guess what? When he had his sons with them, they were all Edomites. They all came out as Edomites. It didn't change their nationality. All right? And the Edomites are still here to this very day. So that's confusion when you teach that 
a person can a person is mixed. Yeah, their 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 um appearance might may become altered. They have a different uh, appearance. They take on you know the feature some of the features of the the the, the mother. But it does not change their pedigree, their, their lineage. Okay. Moses' two sons that he had with um uh Keturah, they were still Levites. So anyway, let's 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 deal with this now. This is uh, Deuteronomy 23, verse 2. It says, A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his 10th generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An, Am an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their 10th generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Now, you see that Ammon the Ammonites and the Moabites are being mentioned as being excluded from the assembly because of a number of things. One, Ammon and Moab, they were born of an um, a incestuous union. Going back to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah after the Lord rained fire and brimstone upon it, the only people that, that escaped was uh, Lot and his two daughters. And, you know, they felt that everybody was gone, so they, they, they sought to uh, get their father drunk. And when they got him uh, pissy drunk, they laid with him and got preg impregnated and they ended up having Moab and Ammon. So they were ancestor babies. So they would be considered illegitimate. Two, we, they're heathens. And three, uh, you had the king of uh, Moab, or right, Balak. He tried to um, use uh, Balaam, who was a, 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 a soothsayer, to, to put a curse upon us. So they so they were straight enemies. So they they damn sure wasn't welcome amongst the congregation. And you got dumbass uh uh, uh um they call themselves Muslims or them 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 uh, Moorish dudes. They always teach that they're Moabites because of Boaz and in um in Ruth. Uh, Obed and Jesse, they were not Moabites. They were Judites. Because Boaz was a Judite. They didn't make them Moabites. All right? Ruth was just a surrogate. She was just a surrogate mother. And she helped to carry the line of, 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 of Judah. So that King David, you know, he would be born through that line. And then ultimately, Yahweh shied generations later that he would come from the line of David. He was the root and offspring of David, who sprang out of Judah. So going back to that term, bastard, which is uh, Mama, Mama Zarah. That's in the Hebrew, Mama Zarah. And it says a bastard child of incest. All right, Moab and Ammon, they're, they're, they were children of uh, incest. Illegitimate child. All right, a child that's born of a, a illegitimate or unlawful union. All right, now, a child that's born of adultery, an adulterous affair, will be considered an illegitimate child. A woman that's, uh, you know, she's married to another man or or engaged to another man but she ends up popping a, a, a getting popped by another man and having a child and, and the man that she's actually married to is expecting the heir to find out that that heir is not actually his child that's illegitimate that child would now have access to the congregation and that's really uh set as a punishment to 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 um punish those type of deeds all right and uh, the only um other scripture that that's used given or using this uh particular term is uh the prophecy in um zechariah 
because they go off when they when they say that uh this this last one and this is uh this is uh Talmud it disagrees with the Talmud we don't agree with the Talmud all right that that's that was written by the synagogue of Satan all right born of a Jewish father and a heathen mother that's not that's not true like I said uh David you know his father uh his grandfather Obed they would all be illegitimate if if that was so okay Moses two sons they would be illegitimate okay real bone real bone his mother was an Ammonite by like Ammonitus he would be illegitimate he wouldn't have been able to sit on the throne of Judah so this is totally off now however if it was the if it was the other way around that would be considered a bastard because that child is actually a heathen and not an Israelite even though the the the, the child came out of an Israelite mother let's get an account of that and which really already did it in that particular lesson in this lesson here I already went into that I don't see how you can still make an argument when the when when it was already proven there's really nothing else to really discuss All right, uh, Leviticus 24 and 10 it says now the son of an Israelite woman whose father was an Egyptian so that means that that child would be an Egyptian a Mizraimite and not an actual Israelite so this was a bastard right here this is a, a prime example went out among the children of Israel and you know he was going to have respect to our Lord and to our custom because he was the the son of a, a, a heathen it says in this Israelite woman's son and a man of Israel fought each other in the camp you better believe the Israelite got the the, the Israelite son got the best of his ass mixed him up you know he, he, he caught that fade and, and got his ass mixed up and he got angry and this is what he did it says in the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed and so they brought him to Moses his mother's name was Shilameth the daughter of Dibri of the tribe of Dan I'm still in the uh new King James let me let me go to the King James it says it says the same thing it says uh verse 12 it says and they put him in ward that the mind of the Lord might be shewed them and the Lord spake unto Moses saying bring forth him that have cursed without the camp and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head and let all the congregation stone him and this is why the Lord had to put that in the law for a, a bastard not to be able to come into the assembly okay because he was a he, he was a son of a heathen so he didn't have any respect to our Lord in in, in the holy uh gathering okay so let me uh let me let me finish reading down it says bring bring forth him that have cursed without the camp and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head and lay all the congregation stone him and thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel saying whosoever curse of his God shall bear his sin and he that blaspheme of the name of the Lord he shall surely be put to death and all the congregation shall certainly stone him as well the stranger as he that is born in the land when he blaspheme of the name of the Lord he shall be put to death all right so that was a bastard that got dealt with so they're not allowed so you go to the other one uh, Zechariah 9 verse 6 and it says and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines now this was a prophecy being made because you know time after this um when Alexander the, the, the Great came into power you know we knew that he he expanded you know his uh his dominion and he went conquering all type of cities all throughout the uh, the known world 
and he made his way down from Macedonia, you know, down in uh, through Syria, you know, down uh, through Palestine. Now, he didn't uh, make war with Jerusalem and, and conquer Jerusalem. He actually had respect to uh, Judea. All right, he came up under uh, Aristotle, which we believe he was a Jake. And he was reminded that he was uh, prophesied in the book of Daniel, that he was that, that leopard. So he actually res respected the Israelites. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't uh, do nothing against us. So he passed over us and went and, and conquered all the other cities. All right. That's why Egypt, you know, you got Alexandria, Egypt. He went all the way down into Egypt and, and conquered that. And Egypt is a Greek term. That's that's a, a, a anachronism. We know that originally the land was known as the land of, of Martizarium, which was one of the sons of um of, of Ham or Hum. See? So when it says bastard, the Greeks was basically gonna colonize the land of um you know, Tyre, you know, all those different uh, lands that was inhabited by the Philistines. All right. And they were going to come there and they're going to dwell there. And they took away their, 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 their might and their wealth because they took pride in that. The Philistines, the people that were there. And uh, Ashdod is um when you do the research, when you look at a map, it's between um, Ashkelon and um, um is is between modern day uh, Tel Aviv, which is on the coast, and uh, the the Gaza Strip. All right, and that was where the Philistines had had lived. So Alexander went and basically, you know, cleared them out and and, and took over, and it became like a a a, a mixed population. And then also, when you look up the history of Alexander. Which, you know, I don't know how uh, accurate it is, but, you know, several historians, they claim that Alexander may have been the fulfillment of that bastard because he was the child of an a, a illegitimate affair of um, through his mother. Let me see if I can find that. When you look this up, and I, I really didn't know this, but this is actual uh, information. I'm not saying that this is the actual fulfillment of a, a, a bastard shell duel in Ashdod, but a lot of uh, scholars and historians, they say that about Alexander. Um, let me see. I know I read it on uh world I think this might be it. Let me let me go to it. Olympias, this was um was his mother. Olympias was the second wife of Philip the second of Macedon. We read about him in um the book of Maccabees. It says in the mother of Alexander the Great. Olympias was the driving force behind Alexander's rise to the throne and was accused of having a hand in the assassination of Philip by Pausanias of Oritus. After Alexander's death, she fought for her grandson but was defeated by Cassander. All right, let me uh, go down. Go down. 
on, hold on. Because I want to be able to find that. I know I read that somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Divorce. Here it is. It says a situation soon arose that could threaten Olympias in her quest to enthrone her son Philip's marriage to Attalus's niece, Cleopatra Eurydice. According to those around Philip, Alexander was only half Macedonian, and the pressure was on for the king to marry someone of pure blood, which, you know, you are what your father is. So Philip divorced Olympias, accusing her of adultery and even claiming that Alexander was not his son. That one means that if that's true, that he wouldn't be uh, legitimate, making him a bastard. Since Philip's marriage to Cleopatra, Eurydice, or Eurydice combined with their pregnancy, but Olympias in a precarious situation. If the baby were a boy and therefore a legitimate heir to the throne, Alexander would not become king all right so this was uh in in the history man now let me get another let me i want i want to find another source Go here real quick. Here we go here. Y'all bear with me for a minute. Because I, I came across this as well. And um, I saw where Alexander basically heard the news about him possibly being an illegitimate son. Let me, let me uh, go down. Here we go. And it says, at the wedding, the wine flowed freely for Philip and his guests, the uncle and guardian of the bride, a Macedonian general named Attalus, asked those assembled to join him in a toast that the new marriage might bring to birth a legitimate successor. Like, yo, like, what you mean by that, right? Alexander sprang up, enraged, demanded to know if Attalus was calling him a bastard, and threw a cup at him. Philip attempted to draw his sword on his own son and fell because he was so drunk. He tripped, and Alexander mocked him. After this drunken brawl, Olympias and Alexander went back to Malaysia. All right, so that's a, this is another source. This is what they're saying. So it was going around, so it, it, it might be possible. You know, because his, his mother, she wasn't like the typical, you know, woman back then. She, just like the how these women are today, you know, with the, with the liberalism and the empowerment that they had, she moved the same way. All right? 
So, you know, and, and with how she was moving, that wouldn't have, <laughs> our women moving like her, that wouldn't have ride in, in, within Israel. All right. She would have got dealt with. So going back to it. So, I mean, it, it does make sense, but that's not saying that that's the fulfillment of that. But we know, according to the history, you know, that these people came over there and they took that land from the Philistines. So it says a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, a, a mamzer, an Ill illegitimate child or, or children shall dwell in Ashdod and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. But this does not insinuate that if an Israelite man lays with a heathen woman and have a child, that that child is a, is a bastard. That's not true. All right. Otherwise, Yahweh Shai's uh, genealogy, that would have got cut off <laughs> with, with, with Boaz. Hell, even back with um, uh, uh, Judah and, and uh, Tamar. So, you know, do, you know I, don't, I don't know if you're trying to suggest that, you know, an Israelite man uh, having a child with a, a heathen woman is a bastard or not but if you are you 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 off and this video should have really you know gave you that understanding all right and 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 also if that's really you and that out and and, and and stop shaving your head bald because that's in the law too all right and judges 11 and 1 it says now let me, let me go back down all right and YouTube that preserves sometimes you know, the that light automatic of, shit. Yeah, you see, dude, I and then he looked like he got a a, a suit. So you one of those type of dudes? You know, I, I don't, I don't, that don't, don't sit right, man. All right, you got to come out of this world, and don't be trying to teach the law or try to correct people on the law when you yourself are not keeping it. Know what you're talking about, and repent. All right. So anyway, I'm gonna give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the elder apostles of the great Muslim who will well peace and blessings to the elect. Lord willing, this was edifying. To the next lesson, Shalom.